obviously treatment of concussions is not just one thing. Um, you know, you have, uh, as, as, as Dr. Dahlia pointed out, there's, there's a period of rest, uh, there's a period of hydration, nutrition, uh, slow return to activity, uh, and you know, even nutrition, what type of nutrition you, you, you consume, um, and you know, sort of neuroprotective things you can do. That's a whole separate sub subset. But in terms of, you know, is there a treatment modality that can help you uh, in addition to physical therapy, in addition to vestibular therapy, in addition to, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, and not having to take medications, especially with persistent symptoms. You know, I'm a physician, I really don't like to take medicines. <laughs> um, and so if there's something you can do that's slow risk, uh, that can help you, you know, you'd probably want to jump on board. So we'll talk a little bit about light therapy and how it, how, how it helps. So photobiomodulation therapy is really using red light and infrared light, and I'll kind of show you the spectrum of how that is. And uh, we, it's used to heal, stimulate, regenerate, and protect, protect tissue that's been injured, degenerating, or normal tissue if you want to be better than normal. So it not only has benefits for, um, for you, know, you know, if you're sick and you're trying to get better, it also has benefits for people who are normal and want to elevate the game and want to be superhuman, if you will. How does this work? I'm not trying to scare you with <laughs> a little biology, but the mitochondria used to be prehistoric bacteria that you know, formed an alliance with, a, um, with your eukaryotic cells, and that's how we made energy. The, the, the prehistoric bacteria, sort of, the mitochondria almost have a bacterial structure, and um, you know, they sort of combined with our cells and they, you know, sort of, you know, I'll, you give me nutrition, I'll give you energy, sort of, you know, had the symbiotic relationship. And so if your mitochondria die, then you will, you know, obviously you'll die because you, you have no energy. Um, so ATP is your energy currency. That's how um, ATP is made by the mitochondria and that's how all of, you know, it takes in sugar, there's a Krebs cycle, it makes ATP. And that's how you have energy to do everything, the cellular functions, you're staying alive. You know, everything that goes on in your body is, is run through ATP. So without it, you can't do much. So <clears throat> when you have, especially in, in near infrared, not as much red light, but definitely near infrared light, stimulates a cytochrome C oxidase, which is a, like chlorophyll for humans, as opposed to, you know, you, you hear of chlorophyll in plants. It's a chromoprotein. Um, and that can then lead to stimulation of ATP, uh, formation of ATP, which eventually then leads to um, gene transcription is when it decodes your genes and then makes messenger protein and you know, affects the function of the genes. It also uh, st um, releases a lot of uh, reactive oxygen species, and I'll explain what that is in the next slide, um, and nitric oxide. Nitric oxide helps your blood vessel, uh, increases your blood flow, uh, it, you know, it, it dilates your blood vessels, brings in more blood flow. So when you talked, when Dr. Dahlia was talking about, you know, pathophysiology of concussions, one thing you learned is there's decreased blood flow, there's decreased glucose metabolism, um, the neurons get depolarized. This therapy does the exact opposite of all of that. It repolarizes your neurons. It, uh, you know, increases your blood flow and um, helps you heal, and we'll kind of get to that a little bit. Now, when I was in medical school, and even to this day, I think most doctors believe that um, your brain, when it's injured, you can't, you don't replace it with brain cells, uh, unlike a bone. You break a bone, you know, you cast it, you, you form bone tissue, and you heal, right? For the most part, that's accepted, we know that. The brain doesn't, for the most part, doesn't do that. You know, you get a brain injury, you have a stroke, you have a bleed. Um, you don't replace it with brain tissue, you really replace it with scar tissue and brain atrophy and then you sort of, you know, that's why people don't really get better and that's sort of what started med school, is what we all believed in. But increasingly we're realizing that um, when you, there are stem cells in your brain that are dormant, that just stick around, even if you're older, they don't do anything, they just stick around, but given the right stimulation, uh, especially if they're exposed to continuous uh, uh, 10 hertz um, uh, infrared light uh, for long enough, they actually then become neurons. 
and then they neurons are brain cells and then they replace what's lost. So what does photobiomodulation therapy do? It uses red and near infrared, say that again, to do all the good things to you, right? <laughs> um, it reduces swelling, it increases antioxidants, decreases inflammation, it protects against apoptosis. This is a fancy word for cell suicide. Um, apoptosis is um, what happens when a cell is injured, but it doesn't, when a tissue is injured and it doesn't, you know, it's not fully damaged or doesn't die yet, it has two choices. Um, it's like, am I going to try to heal myself? Or I'm, it's like, ah, oh, it's too late, I'm just going to try to kill myself off. So apoptosis is a cell suicide where it's actually triggered through the mitochondria, where the mitochondria say, yep, you're not a good friend anymore, I'm, I'm moving out. <laughs> and so when it does that, energy production stops, cells die. Uh, that happens in the brain a lot. So for instance, um, when patients, we deal with, deal with this a lot, um, they have cardiac arrest when their heart stops suddenly, when they're out and about, and their heart stops suddenly, you know, you're doing CPR, come to the hospital, and they're in a coma. And right, you know, right now there's some amount of brain damage, but a lot of the brain is stunned. And at that point, over the next two days, the brain has a decision to make. The brain cells are going to decide if they are going to try to wake up again and recover, or they're going to commit suicide and die. And those that commit suicide and die, obviously those patients don't do well. So one thing we found uh, is if we cool the body down to 33 degrees and kept the body cold um, for 24 to 48 hours and slowly rewarm the patient, we sort of stop that cell suicide process. We fool the, the brain into saying, okay, you don't have to kill yourself out, your energies are really low, so we're not gonna let that happen. Light does the same thing. It re-energizes the cell so it doesn't feel like it has to commit suicide. And then microglial activation. Microglia are like your um, white blood cells for your brain. And they do the scavenging, they look for infections, and they look for things that shouldn't be there, toxins, and, and uh, you know, they get activated by red cells. So we'll t talk a little bit about um, sort of not very clear on the slide, uh, but um, light therapy does a number of things. It increases blood flow, it recruits new blood vessels, it improves the drainage of lymphatic. Lymphatic, so for the longest time we thought the brain didn't have lymphatics. And a couple of years ago, not maybe five years ago, we said, oh, it does have lymphatics. And so we've, and then um, lymphatics, so it's kind of like your, your drainage system. So it drains out all the bad stuff. Um, so uh, it helps with moving all the bad stuff out, stuff out of the brain. Um, obviously uh, has anti-inflammatory properties um, and decreases the likelihood of committing suicide, cell suicide, and increases connectivity in the brain. In the medical field, randomized controlled trials are the gold standard for research. And uh, photobiomodulation has over 550 randomized controlled trials showing positive effect. Um, you know, 4,000 plus lab studies and lots of publications that are coming out every day. Um, and again, this is kind of what I was talking about. It can penetrate your skull, stimulate the brain. It, um, when you do it long enough, it actually helps you make new neurons. Um, it increases connectivity in the brain and normal connectivity. There's actually a ton, if you ever have time, um, there's a series of YouTube videos by a Dr. Lou Lim that talks about, e that looks at functional EEGs. There's a brainwave testing. They take uh, a bunch of people with, uh, um, you know, uh, Alzheimer's disease or, um, you know, uh, 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 schizophrenia, and they, they have the quantitative EEGs, they, and they look at how dysfunctional the brains are connected, and then did light therapy on them, and then looked at the EEGs after, and they can see that it resets back to a normal state. So, um, and in clinical studies, especially for chronic TBI patients, Using light seemed to help with executive function, which is, you know, your working, uh, you know, your daily tasks, um, uh, working memory, and also improve your sleep. Um, and there's a thing called a default mode network. So this is just a, a, a MRI, a functional MRI that shows this. 
a default mode network is different parts of your brain that are connected when you are, like right now, daydreaming. <laughs> so basically, when you're not paying attention to a task, uh, when you're just sitting and not doing anything, you know, doing something mindless, your brain is not, you know, shut down and not doing something. Your brain's actually in default mode. The default mode is sort of your background screen, whatever, you know, on your computer. It's your background programs that are running. What this does is, this is how the brain then, you know, sort of resets itself, heals itself, does things. It's housekeeping for the brain. It's the natural connectivity that happens. When, um, so one of the things in patients with Alzheimer's, they don't have normal default network state. So what happens is um, when this goes away, then you know, toxins start to accumulate in the brain. And during their state of sleep, during the state of mindlessness, when you think that your brain should actually be doing things to repair and heal, it's not doing it. Um, and CTE is very similar. These patients with chronic traumatic encephalopathy don't have a normal default state. So is it safe? Um, light therapy is safe. It's got almost no side effects. When you use low-level um, light or photobiomodulation, your body sort of takes, takes what it needs and, and, and sort of, if you give it a little more, it's not going to get overstimulated. It's going to let it go. I mean, if you use high, free, you know, high energies, yes, you might overdo it. But if you use the normal energies that we use here, the low powers, um, you don't really, um, there's no such thing as overdoing it. Um, once you get to far infrared, that's kind of like almost like your microwaves. That's when your tissues start to heat. Uh, it sort of gets absorbed by water, agitates it, and starts to get hot. Uh, but with red light and inf near infrared light, you don't see that effect. You do get a sense of warmth. Um, that's because of increased blood flow in your skin if you're getting a whole body treatment. But that's not because your tissues are being heated up. So similarly, um, those are passive treatments, right? Avoid this, avoid this. So active treatments are if you're going to physical therapy, if you're getting vestibular, vestibular rehab, if you're getting neck, um, um, neck you know, um, and balance training, all those are active. But can you also um, do something active to not only heal your, you know, make your symptoms better, but actually try to heal your brain itself, heal, heal your cells, let your own body heal and get back to natural, you know, normal or even better than normal. And light therapy can do that. So what can you expect? Um, really no pain, it's, um, uh, it's, it's non-invasive. There's no needles, there's no pain. Um, you will see an improvement in your symptoms, uh, decreased headache, uh, decreased migraines, um, decreased brain fog, clear thinking, you have a sense of well-being, you'll have a sense of increased energy, um, this is just for, you know, post-concussion. In general, photobiomodulation has been shown to help with symptoms of arthritis. Um, and um, believe it or not, actually, this is quite popular with NFL athletes and, and the Navy SEALs. They get treated with whole body photobiomodulation uh, treatments um, before they exercise. And they found that, actually, there's stuff on that wall. If you ever get time, go look at the studies on the wall. Um, um, pay, uh, pay athletes and you know military personnel, they get bigger, stronger, faster if uh, they're on if they get photobiomodulation therapy before they exercise. Um, and you know temporary release of uh, um, minor aches and pains and increased blood circulation. So if you do come uh, here with, I'm not getting paid to say this, so <laughs> if you do come here um, for treatment if you have a concussion or for general well-being, there's different protocols that, that's used and I'm sure Kelly and the team will, will talk more about those. All right, and you know, Greenville has photobiomodulation treatment, which I was super excited to find out it had it, so I'm such a big believer, I got a whole pod myself, bought one from my house. <laughs> So, um, and I use it almost every day.